welcome everybody to today's Wonder Talk. Today I'd like to introduce you to Samantha Oldfield, who is a bio biomedical engineer working as a product development manager at Fisher & Paykel Healthcare. We look forward to your talk, Sam, and take it away. Hi everyone. Thank you, Alison, for that lovely introduction. So as she said, my name's Samantha. You can call me Sam. And I'm one of the senior product development engineers here at Fisher & Paykel Healthcare. And today I'm going to take you a bit through about my career, how I ended up here, what I do with my day, and then finish up with some tips and tricks for you all. So it really starts for me in year 11. So maybe where some of you are right now. And I was convinced I wanted to be a doctor. I thought medicine, that's the one for me. I'll be able to help people. It would be great. There were two problems with that. Uh, I didn't like death and I didn't like blood little bit squeamish and couldn't really understand how I would be the one to say to a family that their loved one had passed away. It seemed like a lot and I just didn't think I could handle it. I would cry in every movie. Marley and me will get me every time. It doesn't matter if it's a human or a dog. And so I just couldn't see myself delivering that kind of news and being a doctor. So I had to start looking around and trying something new. And it was actually one of these types of career presentations where we had a civil engineer come and visit um, my high school. And he said something that really stuck, which was, ah, oh, doctors, one set of hands, you know, one life at a time. But, you know, engineering, that's where you want to make the difference. You can make, you can impact thousands of lives at a time. And so that really set me on the path of figuring out, you know, what is engineering? Could this be a career for me and what should I do? Now, engineering, you might have heard about it. You might have um, a mum or a dad or a sibling that's an engineer or someone in the family. I like to think of engineering as the combination of science, math, design to solve real world problems. So you might say, what does an iPhone, the Auckland Harbour Bridge and your fridge have in common? And it's all about engineers being involved in every step of that process. They take this technical knowledge and this creativity and they try and solve these real world solutions. And that broad definition fit with what I wanted to do at school. I really liked science and I liked maths, so I kept doing those. Added in a swig of graphics, which is optional, but something that I enjoyed. And I went off to the University of Auckland and studied engineering. And um, as Alison mentioned, I studied biomedical engineering. So four years later, I got my degree and said, what's next? And that ended up being a job at Fisher & Paykel Healthcare. Now, just so that we're on the same page, I don't make any of the products you can see on the screen. This is Fisher & Paykel Appliances. They make the fridges, the washing machines, the dishwashers, the ovens, anything you think of when you think of Fisher & Paykel, throw that out of your mind. This is what I want you to think about instead. And so we actually make medical devices and we make medical devices to help people breathe. So that could be someone in the hospital who has got a big problem with their lungs and needs help. It could be someone at home who has sleep apnea and sleep apnea is where you actually um, stop breathing during the night and it can happen lots of times and you end up waking up your brain and getting really tired and it can be really detrimental. But we can also help the littlest people and that's babies. So lungs are one of the last things to develop in the human body. So if a baby arrives before their due date, they might need a little bit of extra help with their lungs and help with their breathing. So this is Fisher & Paykel Healthcare. This is where I work. And one of the exciting things I work on is called OptiFlow. Now you might have heard of it. And what we found is a lot more people know about it and it's because of COVID. So we treat millions of patients every year. And this year we've seen a big rise because of COVID. And OptiFlow is one of these technologies that we developed that's really helping in the fight. So you might remember at the start of COVID, there was a lot of scare, scared people running around because we were running out of ventilators around the world. Ventilators were helping people who couldn't breathe for themselves to breathe. And could, because COVID was affecting their lungs, they were really high demand. And as COVID's progressed and we know more about the disease, what we've found is that OptiFlow has come along 
and it's helped people to breathe without them going on ventilators so that the ventilators can be kept for the really, really sick patients. And in fact, some of the hospitals in the US, we've heard they use OptiFlow and have actually been able to give some ventilators to other hospitals so that we have a redistribution of medical devices and people are getting exactly what they need. But you might wonder what OptiFlow actually is. Um, it helps you breathe, but how does it do that? So I'm actually gonna put it on for you. So OptiFlow is all about delivering heat and humidity and it's air and oxygen and it goes through your nose. Something like this. Now, you don't get to feel it, but I'm wearing it. And so what happens is a bit like sticking your head out of a car window and you get that big rush of gas going towards you. That's what is going up my nose right now. And that's at about 40, 50 litres a minute. Now, that might not make much sense to you. But what I want you to think about is maybe you've watched uh, Grey's Anatomy, Shortland Street, any of those medical dramas. You might have seen someone with this wearing this. You might have even had family or friends in hospital. So this is low flow oxygen. This is two, six liters a minute of oxygen helping you breathe. OptiFlow is 10 times that. It's 60 liters a minute. And we haven't really been able to do that before because oxygen is typically really cold and dry and painful. So you start turning up that flow above six liters a minute and it starts to hurt. OptiFlow doesn't. OptiFlow is matching what's in your lungs and makes it really comfortable. So even when you turn that flow all the way up to 60, you can still breathe and you get that added benefit of so much gas. So if you take your elbow and breathe onto it, that warm, wet feeling is what's in your lungs. And OptiFlow, if you can imagine it going through your nose, is matching that. So you don't expend any extra energy trying to heat that gas up and we can deliver that really high flow rate of gas and make breathing a lot easier. So at Fisher and Paco Healthcare, we products will go through a life cycle. And what I do is I work in the first four main sections of that life cycle. So in research, I might be going out into hospital and talking to doctors or nurses about our products about what they like and what they don't like, about their jobs. I could be coming back to the office and I could be um, making a 3D model of someone's head and understanding how delivering flow, flow through their nose works and how it impacts their lungs. Or I could be researching different areas of engineering and seeing how we could apply it to our products. Another area I might be working in is brainstorming. So like I said, engineering is all about problem solving. In that brainstorm phase, we're really trying to define what it is our product is going to be, what problem are we solving with our product, and generating lots of different ideas about how we could solve the problem. Then I might be in the design phase and I might be making some 3D models. I might make them on the computer or I might make them in real life and get them printed on a 3D printer. I might use a laser cutter or a CNC mill or a lathe all this really cool technology and it's all about bringing these ideas, this brainstorm to life, making these products. And then that final stage that I'll be involved in is testing. Now testing is really important to us here at Fisher & Paykel because our products have been used on really vulnerable, sick people. And if they are not safe and if they're not effective, we could be detrimental, we could be really bad for their health. So. Products like this will get tested, pulled apart, bent, crimped, everything you can think of to make sure it's always going to work for a patient when they need it the most. So on any day, I could be working in one, two, maybe all of these areas, and I could be working across a range of different products. But this is my job. I research, I brainstorm, I design, and I test. And one of the coolest things I've managed to do while working for Fresh and Parkville Healthcare is actually go and visit the US last year for three months, pre-COVID, and learn about our customers up in the United States, how they work, how their hospitals work, what kind of things they're doing with our products and how can we make them better. And I did get to go to Disneyland in the weekends, so I really enjoy the travel aspect of my job. 
Now, so that's a little bit about me and what I do every day. But one of the things that you have to remember are some of those core skills that we use every day on the job. So obviously you go to university for your technical knowledge, but these three things are really, really crucial to being an engineer and particularly in product development. So the first one is brain, uh, problem solving. That's engineering in a nutshell. It's all about problem solving. So you've got to be able to bring that core skill to work every day. We also work in teams. So I can be working with two or three people up to 10, 20, 30. And we have 4,000 people on site. So we're always working in teams. No one person can do one job. We all work together to get an outcome. And always, always really important that we can communicate our ideas and how we're doing. So that could be written and report writing, could be verbal and presentations or in team meetings, but communication is key. So if you can't work in a team, you don't think you can problem solve, or you don't think your communication is up to scratch, practice, practice, practice. Those are the important things of being an engineer. And I'm gonna leave you with one thing I wish I knew at your age when I started pursuing a STEM career. And that is find out what your passion is. STEM is literally everywhere. It touches every aspect of our life and you can find so much to do with STEM. It's really narrowing down and finding out what's going to get you out of bed every day, what's going to get you into your car, beating traffic, trying to do your best for the world. For me, that was helping people. Medicine wasn't the route for me. It was making medical devices and working with a really talented team to impact millions and millions of lives every year. Thanks, everyone. Have we got any questions? Sam, thank you. That was a fascinating talk. Um, absolutely brilliant. It must be so exciting to be part of developing, like being a product development um, person that's helping with COVID. And, you know, what OptiFlow does is just extraordinary. Um, one question for you. What, what, what is the very, very favourite part of your job? What is the thing you love the most about your job? I love being able to see our products being used. So we'll get um, emails coming through about different news articles and they'll show our products. I might see it on Facebook pop up and it's our product being used to save someone's life. My friend works with the babies and she gets it almost weekly. There'll be a photo of a little baby coming up with their product being used to save lives. And it's just a real buzz to know that, you know, you're not the person doing it. That's those really hardworking doctors and nurses. But it's being a part of that moment, knowing, hey, you're what you're doing. It's making a difference.